Once upon a time, there were ancient blacksmiths. In their origins in the 1500s, they developed a process for forging iron ore into simple tools. In the medieval periods, blacksmithing was considered one of the seven mechanical arts, and a skilled blacksmith was a staple in every town, producing tools and weapons and household items, think sewing needles and cauldrons, that were essential for everyday life. These medieval techniques carried through the mid-19th century, but their demand declined with the increase of machinery and mass production of the industrial area. In the early 20th century, there was a brief but very significant golden age for blacksmiths who were artisans who created architectural ironwork. Unfortunately, the Great Depression industrialization drove the art to near extinction, as there was no need for blacksmiths, and blacksmithing as a trader art was actually considered obsolete through much of the century. Fortunately, in the 1970s, a resurgence of interest in the art occurred, and it grew and redeveloped into a unique community of artists who are specialized in their skill, advancing on history and tradition, and hoping to continue the trade into the future. This same story, with slightly different character development, could be told of numerous other artisanal arts, leatherworking, book binding, paper making, stained glass, glass blowing, weaving and knitting, to name a few. These are all arts that found their roots in function and necessity, evolved into mediums of artisanry and art, and now have a resurgence of popularity as skilled art forms, but they run the risk of becoming lost. My thesis and research, titled Lost or Found, The Evolution and Preservation of Artisanal Arts, endeavors to trace the history of these arts and then to answer the all-important question, what is the value of integrating traditional artisanal arts into contemporary visual arts education? To answer this, first we must find which arts are being taught and where, in what regions of the world and in what types of institutions, public schools, trade schools, community centers, or even just passed down through families, and why they're being taught, for function necessity, as creative expression, or to maintain and preserve cultural heritage and tradition. Additionally, we must assess the, the ramifications of mass media culture. For example, is the ready availability of online tools and instructional guides helping to preserve these arts, or are they actually serving to diminish the quality and level of skill produced, thereby further necessitating a need for their inclusion in a formal arts education? Through my research, investigations, and observations, I intend to firmly maintain the importance of an artisanal arts education, thereby helping to ensure that these stories continue so that these lost arts may forever be found. Thank you. <laughs>